Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Ankle Cast. I am Big Anklevich here with you today. Um, so I put out that last episode of the show uh, just the other day, and I've actually gotten one response from somebody already. Although I had to pressure him into making it an audio response, so hopefully. Uh, this whole thing works out. <laughs> I forced him. I said, no, please, don't just write it to me. Please send it as an audio response. And he he uh, caved in and said he would. So this thing may actually possibly work out. But if you have a response to that last story that I put out, bumps in the night, um, send it my way. Record a little audio response, and then I'll, I'll talk about it on the show. Um... And I'm really interested to hear what everybody has to say, because, yeah, I don't know, I mean, like I said, I'd, I'd like to get better as a writer, and I'd also like a little motivation. Um, that's one of those things I've been having issues with recently, is just motivation to write. It's been... I don't know, I think the last thing that I wrote, I wrote for this show, and I want to say it was... Onward to the Breach or something like that was the name of the thing. And that was the last thing that I wrote. And before that, it was before Rish and I said that we would write novels. Now, Rish wrote his novel. He wrote a novel. Uh, he had to finish a novel that he was writing so that he could start on his novel that he was... Although, when it comes down to it, I guess he didn't write the novel he was planning on writing for the novel writing thing. He wrote another novel since, and he wrote the novel that he was working on, but they're all separate. So I guess we all failed. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, so I thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit about writing today on this uh, ankle cast. Um, I have a very special guest here today. Uh, Rich Hatfield is here with me. Hey, what do you know? Who would have thought? We don't do a lot of shows together, but this time I decided to invite him on. <laughs> well, speaking of bumps in the night, I like boobies. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, Rich is here, um, and I thought it would be interesting to talk about writing. Uh, so, you wrote Into the Furnace... That was what you were working on when we said, okay, as soon as June, I think it was June, or was it July was when we were starting, right? June was like planning month. July was writing month and August was writing month. Yeah, we were trying to write a novel in 90 days. We had both gone to a panel, did we? No, just you. Just you told I, me about it afterwards. I'd gone to a panel where a guy, he was really, really convincing that that anybody could do it. Just follow his... Uh, his schedule, his his formula, really. And he said, you know, many of you have already written novels, um, and which is great, and some of you probably haven't written novels, but I suggest that you all try my formula and see. Maybe it will work for you better than how you have been doing it, and maybe not. Maybe maybe you'll go back to the, the other way, but I think for some of you, you'll find that you can write a novel. And in my mind, I thought, yeah, I can do that. And I talked to you, and we both decided we could do that. Um, it, uh, it didn't quite work out, but I did do a, a ton of writing that year. That was 2015, and 2016 was a really good year up to a point, and then, uh, I sort of fell off the wagon. Yeah. And so you and I have been writing about the same amount. Lately. Yeah, you say the same amount, but that's like this week. I mean, how, holy cow... There is a plane, I think, landing in the parking lot where we are sitting here. Um, okay. <laughs> now that it's passed, I will bother to continue talking. Um, Do you edit the show? Is that going to be in there? It'll be in there. Great. Yeah, I only edit things if I really need to. Uh, most everything I will leave, all my ums and uhs and all that kind of stuff, all of that crap I leave, but... Uh, the last show I edited because I couldn't stop yawning. I was yawning over and over and over again, and I that's something I couldn't leave. That and coughs. Yeah, the if thing, I cough you a cough lot. a lot, and 
we always cut out the coughs, but every once in a while on a our, on a Dune Steve for that gets my goat, you'll yawn, and then we'll forget to repeat the line. You should repeat what you just said without the yawn, so the line, uh-huh. the yawn has to stay in. Um, boy, yeah, if we didn't edit the show, it seems like we could put out so many more. And <laughs> I remember when you first started the ankle cast, you would record it and it would be on the air. It would be available to yeah. download the same it day. It would drop the same day. I'd record it like on the way to work and then post it that night. Or, yeah, I mean, just uh, immediately... And I like that. I mean, that's cool because it's up to date. So when I say, yeah, this is what's going on, it really is what's going on. It's not like, yeah, this is what's going Oh, but keep in mind, we're recording this in January and this probably won't come out until September. Um, <laughs> it won't be like that. So that's kind of interesting, I think. See, I my know, show is, is kind of the opposite of that. I was editing one just the other day and at one point I, I say... So, you know, it's the middle of July right now. So you're probably hearing this in September or October. And I was like, middle of July. Oh, shoot. Middle of July 2015. (laughs) Oh, wow. Uh, So, yeah, my my episodes are not timely. Yeah, I don't know that mine are. I mean, mine dried up. I mean, that's one of the sad uh, collateral damages of the whole novel writing not working out thing is that I... I clenched up, man. I was unable to face the music that I had said I was going to do this thing and totally failed. And so rather than do that, I just kind of let the podcast disappear and just pretended that it never existed and that I never existed. And I just, you know, dug a little hole and climbed into it and then pulled the rock (laughs) over the top of it so nobody even knew there was a hole there. I remember... I would bug you about, hey, are you, when are you going to do another ankle cast? And you'd say, well, if I did, it would have to be where I admit f- to failure. And I uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to bum people out by talking for half an hour about how I, <laughs> I couldn't write a novel. And I'd be like, well, just once you get past that, you can... You can talk about other things. You can talk about your, you know, your, the, your testicular problems and stuff. And you're like, okay. And you went... <laughs> to your blog and discovered you had already done yeah. an ankle cast a mea culpa ankle cast yep. so all of these months that you've been like oh gosh I don't want to do that I failed episode you didn't have to you could have yep. been doing I'd actually already done it and I didn't even remember having done it that's how sad it was but that's part of the the format of the ankle cast of, of you record it you can if you want. The plane is coming back. Is it just circling over our heads? They do despise us. And and <laughs> your listeners. But, uh, yeah, you can record it while you're driving to work. If you have a slow day at work, you can post it while you're at work. And then just forget about it. Yeah. Whereas for Which a Dune Steve or a That Gets My Goat or a Rich Outcast, at least you have the reminder of... Well, I went through this. I spent an hour and a half editing it or whatever. So I remember what I said in that episode. Um, this is kind of like a, a radio show yeah. where you're just live on the air. And if you say something and then somebody calls you on it later, you're like, I don't remember <laughs> saying that. I didn't that. say that. What are you talking about? Yeah, I don't know. I am trying to. I mean, your show kind of inspires me a little. I feel like I, sh- I need to expand it somewhat. So including stories... Which is something that I've only done... I mean, there's been 30 ankle casts before now. The one that I posted uh, just the other day was the 30th. And there have been four stories. I re- okay, so, I remember the Super Bowl story. Or uh-huh. football in the future story. Yep. Um, and Bumps in the Night, which was in that last yeah, one. Yeah, I haven't heard one. But the, the one about the guy on... who's imagining... Or sorry, sorry, he's, he's a, 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 a barbarian... But he fantasizes about being. He dreams seen. that when he dreams, he dreams of our boring, mundane world instead of us dreaming of, of uh, you know, some, some crazy fantasy world kind of a thing. Uh, so those are three, and then the fourth one was called "A Million Miles Away," 
or maybe just a million miles or something like that. I'd like it a lot more if it was just called Away. <laughs> and it was uh, about a guy who breaks up with his girlfriend uh, because she wants to move to Mars and he's like, I don't want to do that. And then he sees like the rocket take off and he realizes that he's made a mistake. And he's like, she's a million miles away now, which isn't quite obviously true, because that's a little farther than Mars, but, um, I don't even really remember that story very well, because it's been like a year and a half, I wrote it, like, I think I wrote it just for the show. <laughs> it's one of those, I but put surely it you fast. edited that one. I did edit it myself and put it out, I mean, just the story, I didn't edit the stuff that goes around it. And yeah, so those are the four stories. I've, that's all I've done for the show. But I want to, and I, I, I said it, I think you haven't even heard the episode yet because it came out so recently. But uh, yeah, I'm planning on taking stories that don't make the cut in my mind. Stories where I think, eh, this story doesn't work. It's it's a, it's not the story. It didn't make it. It, it. it doesn't pass muster. I don't want to put it on the Dune Steve. Because I don't feel that it's good enough to go on the Dune Steve. And so I figured I'd put it on here and then say, okay, now why is it that it's not good enough? What is it? Am I wrong? Did I make wrong steps? Do I, what is it about this story that makes me think it's not good enough? And yeah, we'll, we'll see what people say. That's what I did with Bumps in the Night. Um, and yeah, it, on top of that, I was hoping to get a little motivation because. I just don't have it. Uh, if I had motivation, I would make time for writing. Right now, I don't make time for it. And I don't have a lot of time. That's probably my biggest problem, is that ever since I became the father of a young child again, I found just how hard it is to have time. And, th and I think the bigger problem is, with my older children, they had other kids to play with, because they're their brothers and sisters were near their age uh, but this child does not so all his spare time uh, he wants one of his parents to be there with him doing stuff and so uh, even you know Saturday or whenever I don't have time I, I can't it's, it's like I got a barnacle uh, that has attached itself to me and no matter where I turn it goes it turns with me um, so yeah, I find it really difficult to find time to do anything. I mean, shoot, I had that friggin' ankle cast ready for like four days before I even posted it. Four days, though, <laughs> compared to me going months or I, more than a year in some cases, uh, seems pretty good. But, I, but I, I understand. We all have our measuring stick, and yeah, it shouldn't take long for yeah. you to get it posted. One thing I was thinking I need to do is make just a list of things that I need to accomplish so that when I do have a time, because, I mean, I actually had time I could have posted that show, but I was just like, oh, yeah, I, uh, I've got an hour before I need to go to bed, and so I watched an episode of Game of Thrones when I could have done that, you know? So, you know, it just depends. Uh, I could have done it. I just forgot because it had been two days since I should have done it. And now it's just like, oh, uh, so I got a minute. Um, now I guess I'll just do this. Well, I can't help but hijack your show because that's what I that's do fine. Go for on it. every podcast. That's why you're here is to hijack. I, I also have a show with Marshall Latham, and I edited it over the weekend. And, oh, it was just horrific to hear how many times he said, oh, I, I, I have a... And I just talked over him. <laughs> and I was like, oh, gosh. Michael Marshall was trying to make a... a, a a point here, and he never got to the point because I couldn't stop jabbering. Um, but the uh, the big inspiration for the Rish Outcast was this show, okay. was the Ankle Cast. But I think the big inspiration for the Ankle Cast, and I could be wrong, but it's it's a small inspiration for the Rish Outcast was Corey Doctorow had a podcast. Or he would just be like in a hotel room or on the crapper, and he'd say, "Hey, this is Cory Doctorow, and here's the story <laughs> I've say, been hey, writing." Hey, this is Cory Doctorow, <laughs> uh, and this is the story. <laughs> anyway, I was just and I, 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 Cory Doctorow is a million times more successful than I'll ever be, and handsomer, I'm sure. But 
the quality, those. the audio quality was so, so bad on this Cory Doctorow podcast that I, my jaw just came unhinged. I like, I, I don't even understand half of, I, okay, I understand two thirds of what he's saying, but it's just really, really, really low yeah. quality audio. But the fans don't care because they're getting new material from this writer that they love. They're getting new stories and new, uh, you know, he because he would go to conventions or he would go to, I don't know what he did because maybe at this point he was a professional writer and he would go and he would talk on panels about writing or maybe he had another job and he was writing on the side. I don't know. It was, it was like 2000 six or so 2007 when he was doing this podcast at the dawn of podcasting and part of me sa said well I it doesn't matter the quality of the sound that what matters is the connection that you make with the audience that likes to hear what's going on with you likes to hear the things that you're working on mm -hmm. we could do I could do I sorry not we I could do something like that and then, yeah, you started doing the ankle cast. And I don't know if it had anything to do with Cory Doctorow's show, but the sound of, like, the car engine and the, <laughs> it was the tires really bad to begin or whatever, with. it didn't matter because you were just being you, just kind of... It was like checking in with a friend. And even though you and I talked all the Check time or whatever, anyways. I was hearing you talk about things that went on at work or with your family or whatever that I didn't know. Anyway, it, it it inspired me. It encouraged me to the point where on my show, every once in a while, I kind of have to hit the brakes and go, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have shared that particular thing, <laughs> guys. Um, stop talking here. Whoops. Because I forget that it's potentially got people out there and all that. Anyway, sorry. Uh, tell me a little bit about where this show came from. Did it have anything to do with that Cory Doctorow? <laughs> You know, I wish I could remember uh, at this point. I remember... Hold on one sec. Are we recording? We ain't doing nothing. Okay, we are. I was just... I don't know what it is. It's... Maybe it's just the amount... The sheer amount of times we've been sitting here in this parking lot and realized something wasn't working that I just can't help but be uh, paranoid here. Um, but yeah, where did I remember the first time I did it was shortly after we went to the New Media Expo the first time. And we did, I think w when we drove down there, we used this tablet that I had at the time to record Doonstief on the Go podcast as we drove down and back. We recorded a bunch. Um... And, I, yeah, I think we used them, and we're just like, uh, sorry about the really crappy audio quality, but, you know, here's some... That gets my goats that are on the go. And uh, I, I, it may have been that, where I thought, you know what? I've got this tablet, and I can do this anytime. Why don't I just go for it? Plus, you have a super long commute. Yeah, I do. And People. I'm not sure... I don't know what it was that made me decide that it would be worth doing. It may have, may have been what somebody said at one of those panels or something like that about uh, getting in touch with your audience or something like that. I don't know. We I, went to a, a panel. I think it was the very first panel we saw, like the night before our panels were going to be, where a guy talked about podcasting and how freeing it was and that everybody could do it and, and that there are X number of bloggers. And it was some obscene number like hundreds of millions or some crazy uh -huh. number like that versus x number of podcasters and it was high thousands and he's like if you do the math that's x number versus x um so if you really want to stand out from the crowd why don't you do an audio blog why don't you just write a blog and you can record it or whatever and you'll gain so many new fans because it's unique it's it's unlike a, you, it's something they can't get elsewhere, and I don't know if that added anything to it. But do you remember that guy saying that and me going, "Wow!" I, and then oh, and the other thing that he said, which shouldn't have spoken to either of us, is <laughs> there are no female podcasters. Yeah, they're like one out of eighty-seven podcasters is female, and we're just like, "What?" Yeah, because you and I 
had been raised on people like Merle Lafferty who were female and it was like, oh, wow, it's, yeah, I, I never really occurred to me that they're in the minority. But, you know, I mentioned Mer Lafferty. Who else could I mention? You know? <laughs> Mer Lafferty and um, um, <laughs> Kate Baker. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't know what it was really that, that got me. I think it may have just been that, just that if I'm going to be a writer... Then I should do this. I should have a podcast that's just about me, about my deal, about my writing. That you know, people can if they. I mean, I know, I know there's not people that are just fans of me. I think but, there are, dude. You know, the people who are fans of us can maybe become more of a fan of me if they listen to this too. I don't know. Well, I <laughs> I got an email today. And it was all about our last podcast. And I read it and I was like, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> and then he mentioned Bumps in the Night. And I was like, I, again, don't know what he's talking about. And I realized that he had sent me an email about your ankle cast. And so there's somebody who's a fan of you. All right. Um, although... Yeah, I, you know. And he interacts with you about it. <laughs> he does. Lovely. But I, I, <laughs> just to go back to that January 2014 uh, trip, oh my gosh, we were so pumped up afterward about the podcasts we were going to do, about the writing we were going to do. And it, it lasted for weeks. I remember just, you know, we were excited because we'd been around other creative people and, and hearing we got to meet a bunch of people that we had only known as voices up to yeah. that point. And uh, I, almost without fail, we all hit it off. And, I, yeah, just it was really cool um, to get together with other people who have similar interests or who maybe are higher up on the ladder of success than you are. Because you can look to them and say, wow, this guy quit his job and he just writes or he just blogs or he just whatever it is. Yeah. And I, I could do that. I, I'm not that much less talented than that guy. You know what I mean? I remember us doing that and just, oh, it, it, it helped carry us yeah. for a few months after that. And then the next year when we went back the second time and after listening to Scott Sigler's thing, I remember the two of us even more so uh, super uh, excited and, and positive and all that kind of stuff that didn't last but well, uh, no I probably started my <laughs> Rish Outcast after that Scott Sigler pan uh, not it wasn't a panel it was just him talking I'm not sure what it what, what how to describe that talk address or something like that and speech he just talked about how he audio published his own work and again just like with the Cory Doctorow thing people connected to it people he, he gained fans who had so enjoyed the stuff that he gave them for free that they were willing to pay for stuff later on um, and I, I don't know and that even really... pay for the stuff that they'd gotten for free you know in a different format like he published novel versions, you know, book, uh, you know, versions of the what he'd done on his podcast and people would buy that, which I can totally understand because I kind of do that. Uh, I tend to, if I want to read a book, I will actually get the audio book of it from the library or something like that. And if I like it, then later I will buy the novel of it. Uh... And so, and and then and I also become a fan of that person and look for more of their stuff when it comes along. So, it seems like a a good way. I mean, it, it's going back to Cory Doctorow. You know, his saying that he would always talk about is, you know, he does everything in Creative Commons because the worst enemy of a writer is not copyright infringement. Not in not in this day and age. The worst enemy is obscurity nobody knows about you then who the hell cares how many you sell it's not going to be enough to matter 
but the more people can just share your stuff with their friends and their neighbors and etc without worrying about it and the more you know people just make your story into a podcast on this podcast and that other podcast you know etc the more your name gets out there and the more people know about you and then the more likely you'll sell stuff to them so you know that's what that crap is all about and that's I mean kind of one of the reasons why I have this show is just to have my name out there and in more ways. Unfortunately, I, I've never lived up to what I was after with this show, and I never have uh, done the writing that I needed to do to go along with it. Um, here's an interesting question. I don't know. I mean, this is going to be way off topic, but this is the question that I, I had in my head that uh, I wanted to ask. Ask the listeners. Uh, you guys can tell me what you think of this of, of this quandary and Rish you can tell me what you think as well um I, I think we've mentioned this before in, the way I prepare a story I guess is I get like a germ an idea seed and I and if it's good enough I will remember it and I will kind of work on it and I will uh to continue the metaphor, I water it for a while and I make sure it has sunlight and it grows a little bit and, you know, if it's not particularly good, it never gets to become very large, but sometimes it grows and it grows and I keep working on it and it keeps growing and um, sometimes I actually finish something and, it, and I guess that's when it bears fruit. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways... Um, so I work on stories for a long time usually before I ever even try and write them. Um, so I have this idea, and I told Rish about this a long time ago, this idea. Basically, and sadly I've started to think of it this way, it, it wasn't this way when I first thought of it, but uh, recently I realized that I could pitch this story as Highlander meets... Young Justice is what I go with because it's teenage people with superpowers. Um, but anyways, so there's people that have superpowers. Teenagers, kids in high school have superpowers. And, uh, you know, this and that, little ideas for this story come into my head and I add them to the plant, like putting fertilizer on it or I don't know what. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, one idea that I came up with that I thought would be fun, and it came to me because my four-year-old son w watched the Ninja Turtles, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon on Hulu, and there's a Ninja Turtle character named Leatherhead. Leatherhead, I believe, is a He's crocodile, an oh, okay. or an alligator uh, mutant. And he's actually a friend of the... He's not the enemy of the Ninja Turtles. He's uh, kind of an ally. So they're always like, Yay, Leatherhead! Yeah, let's go do some fighting and stuff! Woohoo! Um, but my son would mispronounce... Would mispronounce for, I don't know why he would call him this, but he always called him Lemonhead. Which I thought was really cute for some reason. And I thought, you know what? That's, that's something I want to somehow use in a story... And I decided uh, that a good way to use it would be in this story of teenagers with superheroes. No, with superpowers, sorry. And uh, so I thought, you know, what if there was this guy who just comes up with nicknames for all of his friends and for someone to be wind up with the name Lemonhead... Either it's something really obvious, like mm, she was eating lemon heads one day, um, or what would be more fun is if nobody has any idea why he comes up with his nicknames and he's he doesn't tell anybody. You know, it's it's a mystery. They're just like, oh yeah, he he calls everybody something. Nobody knows what where he gets them from or whatever. But yeah, he, he comes up with these great nicknames for everybody. And yeah, the, so he meets this girl and he starts calling her Lemonhead. And you don't know why. I mean, she doesn't even have blonde hair. Her, her like, hair's black or, you know, whatever. Nobody knows why he comes up with these nicknames. But he has a nickname for all of his friends. Pretty much everybody. Anybody 
out there, even like the jocks that he hates or like the nerdy kids that he doesn't hang out with or the whatever, they all have some random nickname. He never calls anybody by their name. And then, you know, the thing happens and people get superheroes. Or <laughs> I keep saying get superheroes when I mean superpowers. Anyways, they get superpowers and they already have these nicknames now, so they're already kind of like have superhero names, uh, even if they don't really work. I mean, like, you can use a code name and call somebody Lemonhead or whatever instead of by their real name, but you know, they're, they're like kind of silly superhero names when it comes down to it. But there's the main character of the story who. Uh, the superpower he gets is speed. He's able to run very fast. And, uh, I had this idea, finally, where, okay, the nickname that this friend of his calls him is Zipper. And I thought it'd be funny if there was this scene where the kid's like, you know, I think it's so great, because, like, we all go by the nicknames that you give us, but... I'm the only one whose nickname actually goes with their power that they have. So I think it's so cool that you call me Zipper because I run fast. And then his friend just kind of smiles in a kind of, uh, you know, a knowing way. Like he's got an inside joke or something that uh, his friend doesn't know. He's like, what? Why are, you, why are you smiling like that? What? And finally his friend says, well, okay, I know that I've never told anybody where the nicknames come from and everybody thinks that they're just random or whatever. Actually, they're kind of like a mnemonic device that I come up with to help me remember people. Uh, otherwise, I really don't have a very good memory, so I, I learned how to do this when I was in grade school from a counselor. And um, the reason why I call you Zipper is because the first day when I met you, your zipper was undone. <laughs> and so the kid's just like, oh. And now it's just like, I thought that my name was really cool, but it's just because I was an idiot and I had my zipper down. Oh. Um, anyway. So there's no explanation for Lemonhead. Well, I mean, maybe a, an, an explanation she for Lemonhead. She was just eating Lemonhead? Maybe she was eating Lemonhead, but not. The day that he met her. <laughs> See, I thought eventually it's like all of their powers were going to be related somehow to the nicknames because his power was to see the future or something. <laughs> it's just a disturbing coincidence. Yeah, it's just something. That the guy can run and he called the zipper. Right. So it's just a something silly. But so I thought of that and I just thought, oh my gosh, I, I just I loved the idea and I I would try to come up with nicknames. Every time I'd hear just something that's kind of nicknamey, but not your standard nickname, something that seems more random, like Lemonhead or Zipper or something like that, I would like try and store that away in my memory. I'm just like, oh yeah, he, can, he can, that can be the nickname that he has for one of the people in this story, and I would work on that. And I, did, I you know, I've been doing this for a while, just thinking about these names and kind of setting them aside and stuff. And then one day, uh, we, I think we were driving on vacation, and the kids were watching Big Hero 6. And I realized that I must have somehow sideways her, you know, it just... It's, it's one of the, I think you mentioned that, your teacher said this, you know, if, if you come up with an idea out of, out of the blue, like the first thing you come up with, it, you came up with it because you've heard it somewhere else and you stole it and it's not a good idea, so don't go with your first idea ever. Um, and yeah, I, I, I guess that's what this is. Fred is the guy who gives nicknames to all the other people in... The uh, group, the big, the six big heroes, um, you know, he names the one guy Wasabi because he spilled Wasabi on his shirt. 
And even, yeah, the nicknames are not normal nicknames. They're odd. And worst of all, the tall blonde girl's name is Honey Lemon. <laughs> which is just, I mean, it's a lemon. I, I, can't, I assume that must be where the lemon head connection, you know, came through. I don't know. I, I hear that and I think, oh, crap. I just ripped that off. I've got to just dump that, I guess. I can't use it because it's, you know, it's just stolen. I don't know. I, and the thing that, the question that I have now after all that long story is, is that true? Is that the case? Do I need to dump that? Is that too derivative that everybody will read that and go, oh, yeah, okay, Big Hero 6. Lame come up with a new idea you suck um i don't know it frustrates me because i like the idea of the zipper story if i if i hadn't gotten that far uh and had a little scene that goes with it where you actually discover what the names come from kind of a thing i wouldn't be as upset to realize that i'd stolen that from something else um what do you think? Is that what is that something I need to dump? Or is it something where people just you know, there's an, I don't know, there's enough of similar things out there or we probably won't recognize it or I don't know, what do you think? Well, it's not like the entire story hinges on that. Uh-huh. It's just that's just a small amusing aspect of your superhero story. I mean, the fact that the guy can run fast, that doesn't bother you that there's a Quicksilver in Marvel and that there's a Flash in DC, that there are people that run fast as superheroes, uh, which to me seems like a much bigger thing than just that there's a guy that gives nicknames. And we just accept that. It was like, yeah, okay, that's a superhero. We all wish that we could move faster. We all wish we could fly. We all wish we could move things with our mind or, or you know, heal or breathe underwater or communicate with fish. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, there are just certain things that are... Yeah, naturally. Oh, it wouldn't be great. It would be great to have that kind of superpower. I think that there's nothing new under the sun. As far as superpowers go, and I would say that's definitely the case. They you have could, gone so far afield that there's no... Well, like, you and I used to watch Heroes together when it was new, and there was an <laughs> analogous X-Men to every <laughs> single character on Heroes. Yeah. You know where I'm going with this, so don't spoil the punchline yet. But we would watch this and be just like, holy crap, this guy's like Rogue, and this guy's like Kitty Pride, and this guy's like Wolverine, and this guy... Until suddenly, we got to a character whose power was he could turn metal into goo. <laughs> he could turn metal into a liquid. That was his power. And we're like, wow, that that's okay, guys. Heroes, you have come up with a power <laughs> that nobody has ever come up with before. Well done. Cut. Eight, seven, eight years into the future, you and I started watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I think is a great show. And they run into a superhero whose power is to turn metal into goo. <laughs> so there really and it is nothing it didn't new. bother me at all it's just like oh wow <laughs> that seems oddly familiar <laughs> and turns out that that power ends up saving them in one episode where you're like oh oh wouldn't it be great to have somebody that could turn metal into goo right now <laughs> oh here he is or she I can't remember it was a he yeah. and they, yeah just there you go man I it doesn't bother me at all that agents of shield had a character who could turn metal into goo because it was done in a unique way or it wasn't all about that or or maybe I'm just more forgiving. Uh, there was, there's a writer who's very, very successful and his very first book was a giant bestseller and I couldn't get past... I couldn't get past the idea that this was a blatant rip-off of something that I loved to the point where I could say, well, this character is this character and this character is actually this character and this character is this character and by the time I got to the fourth or fifth I was calling this guy a hack. I was saying that anybody that liked him needed to be put into a camp. It was just 
it was a stumbling block I could not get past because it was such, in my mind, a gigantic ripoff that it was a deal breaker forever. I hate that guy. I'll never read anything that he writes again. But I've run into so many people that are like, yeah, I, I can see there was somebody that who... it would be like this. But, oh, I, those books are still fantastic. Oh, gosh, there's such... Oh, you know, he's writing stuff that's not just remakes of some other franchise. And I can't <laughs> wait to buy those as well. And it to them, it didn't matter. So it, it's just... Yeah, there is nothing new under the sun, but that you can tell an old story in a new way. Or an old plot point in a new way or what you're doing is taking a plot point and just turning it into a joke and maybe the bigger deal the more of a mystery that it is for the characters of what this how, what does he know how could he know does, how, did he have a dream maybe this came to him as a vision and it turns out to be a joke uh, I that seems to work for me alright so you don't think that I need to jettison that I could still work that in somehow you're passionate about it. Your writing process and mine are very, very different. With the exception of one, of two projects, mine just tend to, to fizzle out if I don't write them immediately. And you, you can have an idea in 2004, <laughs> and it's 2016 now, and you're like, no, that's still in the back burner. It's still in my head. I'm still going to write that, and I can tell you in detail what that story is. And you haven't lost anything in these 12 years. Well, and to me, that is kind of amazing. That's not totally true. I have lost, you know, small details. It depends on how long I let it lay fallow. If it goes to the back of my mind and stays there too long, when it comes back forward, I'm like, oh, I think I had more to this the last time, and I don't remember it as well anymore. So, yeah, I'm it. I'm not that good at remembering things, but the idea. Well, you're better is, than me. The idea itself tends to not go away. It's just some of the details sometimes get lost. Every writer has a different process and a different way of motivating themselves. And um, I've been reading a book about Star Trek The Next Generation, about the making of it, and I've talked your ear off about it because it's fascinating <laughs> to me because the show was such a disaster on the writing end and how that became like this beloved series is kind of a miracle but one of the showrunners said, uh, you know, he hired a ton of writers uh, over the years and he'd never met a writer worth his salt that didn't hate the writing process. And when I heard that, I was just like, oh, wow, really? I mean, it's just, I guess I hadn't heard that because I'm used to Stephen King who just, he, he writes more before 7 a.m. than any writer I know do, do all, all day. Yeah. And... If he doesn't write for like five hours in a row, he feels like he's a slacker. Or, you know, it's like the one day he doesn't write is his birthday. You know, and even then it's just like, well, it's getting to be seven o'clock. I probably put in four or five hours tonight of writing. But I'm not that way. To me, it, gosh, sometimes I have to drag myself kicking and screaming to the blank page. And then I kick and scream while I'm writing. And, and maybe I'm better than most people. With the writing. Well, you do. I'm mean, right a, a pretty fair amount. You were saying earlier that 2015 was a pretty good year for you, and 2016 has been good so far, although for the last, what would you say, a couple weeks you've had some issues? Yeah, I'd say, I was going to say 10 days, but it's probably been 14 days without writing now. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's a, a pretty short dry spell when you're sitting next to me. Um... But you and of I... Of course, you got to be careful not to let it continue. If you don't get back on there at some point, you're going to be like me where it's just easier to keep not doing it than it is to get back into that momentum. Because that's, I think, a real thing, like getting momentum. You know, they have those uh, deals on Facebook. Uh, deals? Things is what I mean by deals. Um, <laughs> they... They'll, you'll just get on and they'll say like, Big Anklevich, your memories are important. You posted this five years ago. So I saw one just the other day where I had posted something five years ago and apparently this was the time where I was writing every single day 500 words a day for the entire month of September. 
That was five years ago. <laughs> Which I would have guessed it was three years ago or something less than five. But anyways, yeah, I mean, that's something that I forced myself to do. And, and I've talked to, we've talked about it before where you and I would get together and we would podcast on Monday night and we would go until like three in the damn morning and then you'd go home and I'm like, yeah, I still got to write my 500 words. And I actually did it. I actually sat down and wrote 500 words before going to bed, even though it was three in the morning. And then I let myself stop once that month was over, which I wish I could go back in time and tell myself, no, now kick it up to a thousand or anything other than, okay, you did it. Pat yourself on the back and quit. Um, because yeah, the momentum really means something, you know, you get that going and it becomes a habit and then you become like Stephen King eventually where you're just, you're not happy. You know, there are people who are runners and running sucks. I mean, it's hard and it's painful and it's, you know, you're sweaty and you're tired and you're, you know, uncomfortable. But there are people that just don't feel complete. They don't feel happy. They don't feel whole until they've gone and run for the day. And if they don't get up and do it first thing in the morning, then the rest of the day, they're just like, oh, gosh, I need to go running. I just, uh. And then they'll do it when they get home or, you know, whenever it is that they have time and... I don't know if writing has any endorphins involved like they say running does where, you know, people run until they break through the wall and they get those endorphins and they're like, oh, yes, oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. I'll have what she's having. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think it's still kind of similar in just that, you know, you... you you force yourself to do something all the time until you move beyond that. And, um... The, 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 different things motivate different people. You and I have been at this for a long time. <laughs> for ten yeah. years, you and I have hung out basically weekly. I mean, what, ten years ago, we were hanging out every single day or every other day yeah. kind of thing. And Well, we did work together and, at that point. And then, you know, after that... It was still like every single week and and we were always trying to motivate one another about writing. And, and I'll tell you, one of my favorite things in the world to do is to talk about writing. Yeah. And another of my favorite things in the whole world is to have written. <laughs> <laughs> But, but the writing. Actual writing. I, and I can't get over it because... Again, yeah, we've been doing this for 10 years or longer. It's not changed. It's not gotten any easier. Yes, okay, the beginning of 2016, I wrote for a month or, or six weeks or whatever. And, and, uh, and yeah, it was just like, wow, okay, I'm doing it every single day. But it was so easy to not do it once yeah. I didn't. And it was the so second and you it was, stop. Yeah, the second I stopped, it was like, oh... This is what I should have been doing. <laughs> Not writing. Yeah. It is so easy. And I, it's, I, I think it's like the opposite of being a drug addict or something where, you know, you're a drug addict and then you stop taking drugs and you fight through it and you fight through it. And then the first time you ever take drugs again, boom, you might as well have never, ever made any progress ever. Okay, I that's think we are exactly totally... exactly what writing is like. We are on the, the same page with this, and that's so weird, but it's not just us. I mean, I told you about the, the, the statement that the, the Star Trek guy said, but I know that George R. R. Martin is that way, and I've seen him interviewed where he's just like, I can't. do. I see these other writers. I can't do what they do. I'd like to, I, and believe me, my agent would like me <laughs> to write every single day and to put out X number of pages a week, and, and I just can't do it. And Thomas Harris, the guy who wrote Silence of the Lambs, writes a book like every 10 years, and he's described the process of writing like giving birth. He's like, it's so painful and so sweaty and messy and horrible that when it's done, I would never want to do it again. <laughs> and I, luckily, I'm not that bad. 
Right. I'm, I'm just like, wow, okay, so it could be worse than it is. Yeah. But like, I get together with you and I talk about the the, the projects that I'm working on and 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 like I I wrote this story called The Calling that a lot of people liked. We ran it on the Dunstief, and you can go buy it if you haven't read it. Uh, and I've been telling you about this sequel to The Calling that I'm I'm putting together and and I yeah I've got. 18,000 words or something like that done on the sequel to The Calling. It's a big uh, commitment or whatever you want to call it. Accomplishment. And then I just stopped. But after I had written for a half hour or whatever, I loved to tell you I got X number of words today or oh, I got and to I the part where And I did this part of the story and, and this is what happened. And I don't know if that bugs the crap out of you or not, but to me it was just like, yay! Oh, look what I accomplished! I, I mean, it's like a woman that gives birth and she's like, oh, look how beautiful this baby is and she's forgotten that she was screaming and sweating and where's my fucking epidural and, and I, you are not the father, I hate you and I, you know, don't ever touch me again. I want a female doctor. Everybody leave me alone. And then once she's got this thing in her arms, it's like, oh, oh, this was a miracle. The miracle of birth. And it was painless. So worth it. Come hold your child. And you're like, what? You told me Are I wasn't the father. Sure? <laughs> you told me you would gouge my eyes out if I came that close again. Um... Yeah, I don't. The, the, this is this is how I find it to be, and I think I'm a little bit different than you. Like you said, you love to have written. Um, I find that getting myself in the chair to actually write is the hardest thing in the world to do. Once I start writing. Uh, as long as it's not one of those days where it's really hard and it's like pulling teeth or something like that. Once I just get going, I love it. I'll be writing and be and I'll be like, oh yeah, this is why I like writing. And I'll be having fun while I'm writing. And then I'll be done for the day. And then the next day I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't, no, I don't want to do that. I, um, no, I've got, oh, I need to clean the rain gutters. That's right. They wanted me to get... Uh, my wife needs me to get all the nasty, rotten, wet, old leaves out of the rain gutter. I, I think I'd rather do that. <laughs> um, it's it's so hard for me to force myself to do it. But once I do it, then I'm like, oh yeah, I like this. Why don't I do this more? And then the second I hit, you know, put the computer to sleep or hit save or whatever on the pro on the on the file then I'm back to before where I'm like no 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 anything but that uh what's that you need uh somebody to volunteer for your study on the effects of shoving uh razor blades under your fingernails okay I'd rather do that <gasps> Okay, well, in many ways we are similar, but in other ways we're we're different. And your biggest stumbling block is actually doing the writing. Mm -hmm. And my biggest stumbling block is doing something with the writing. And it's weird. We ha we are aware of our weaknesses <laughs> or our shortcomings or our kryptonites, and yet I'm unable to do anything about it. And I haven't talked about this. If, if you're only a fan of Big Anklevich through his ankle cast... <laughs> we have a show called The Dune Steve that you could listen to. Um, but well, there's I'm, a lot of people like that, actually. But I'm always really talking big. about, you know, I wrote this story. Nobody's ever going to read it. I wrote it, but I, I, I haven't published it or I, I haven't, uh, you know, I'd hate, uh, I, I don't know what people would think. And you tend to not really understand what I'm talking about. You're <laughs> like, but you wrote it. And I think that it's good. So put it out there. Other people think that it's good too. And if they don't, F them. <laughs> and I just, I've, I, it's weird. That's another thing that in the 10 years we've been doing this, it's gotten a little bit easier, but not tremendously easier. I, I, I guess kind of what we were talking about with the, the, uh, doing the solo podcast. Still going. It's, it's nice to know that people care. It's nice to know that there's somebody out there that was listening, or it's nice to know that somebody out there liked the story and would like there to be more. Um, but 
what's the opposite of a little bit goes a long way? <laughs> Somebody could say, oh my gosh, I loved Birth of a Sidekick. I think it was great. Uh, you should write another one. And I'd be like, oh, that's wonderful. I am going to write. And by the time that sentence is out of my mouth, I've already forgotten that somebody said something nice. And I guess I need constant encouragement or constant prodding. Ego stroking. Or, and that's sad. You, a person shouldn't need that kind of ego stroke. A person should be like, well, I think it's good. And that's all that matters. Well, there are people like that. And those are probably the successful ones as opposed to us. Okay. Uh, the kind of people like Stephen King, who they don't care. They're going to write. They're going to write for eight hours a day, and they're, you know, it doesn't matter what people say. People will say good things or bad things or no things. They'll just keep doing it. There are people that are like that. Uh, and, yeah, then there's other people that... And I think, yeah, I mean, ego stroking, I'm sure, would, would help me uh, be more motivated. Like, like I said, somebody had a comment on Bumps in the Night. And one of the things that they said was, you know, you, if you, you know, you're a good writer. I mean, this, the idea maybe wasn't particularly novel or whatever that you did, but it was still interesting, uh, because what you wrote, you know, made it relatable and interesting and, and kind of fun. Um, so just a comment like that makes me think, oh yeah, maybe I should... You know, this, you know, maybe I should write the story about Highlander meets uh, the Justice League because, um, even if I if even if I include that character that's just like Fred, uh, he'll be my character that's just like Fred. So he won't be just like Fred. Just that one thing that he does will be like Fred, and hopefully my, I don't know, my style, my whatever will be interesting. But. I don't know. Anyways, uh, that's uh, it does kind of give me motivation to get that, and I'm hoping that it'll last long enough that I can actually start talking with you like this. I mean, we should do probably a podcast like this once a week where we just talk about writing, because every time we talk about writing, I feel a little oomph, a little push to write. Um... Even if our podcast was just, hey, this is the idea that I have right now, and this is what I want to work on, um, and I'm thinking about this, and I'm thinking about that. I don't know. I wonder if that podcast would be cool, or if it would just destroy everything, because people would have heard all our ideas before they go to read them. You've heard... No, I don't think so. I think people would be like, oh, I remember. This is the one about where he, pet, you know, talked about this, where the, where the girl just starts eating rocks, and you don't know why she's eating rocks. I want to read that and find out what he came up with for the reason that she was eating the rocks. Right? Uh, people might, and I could be wrong, but people might be more emotionally invested because they were there at the, at the outset where, where you came up with that idea. We were going to do a series of story-generating podcasts where we drove and we're like, okay, let's come up with an idea and we'll come up with a beginning, a middle, and an end of a story together. Because, uh, yeah, so that somebody emailed the other day and said, oh, I love... I love the Dune Steef. I love the songs that you guys do together. And I love the stories that you guys write together. Like, together we create more than we could on our own or something like that. And I was just like, wow, that's that's interesting. We never collaborate anymore. <laughs> but that's interesting that the guy loved those. But, yeah, we were going to do these things where we came up with a story just on the fly. And there's something really enervating, at least for me. Uh, of story creation of just and then this and, and oh what if this uh, no 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 what about this and you go oh and you bounce back and forth and you feel and I'm sure your brain releases some kind of endorphins <laughs> then the same as you know these people that run get th these things released from their brains gosh there's even a name for that chemical that your brain produces when you're in a team environment and it works, you know, where when you're working with another person, the soldiers get this this uh, release in their brain. Ku Klux Klan people get this released in their brain. You know, it's just like a, a whole bunch of, you know, debate team people or whatever. It, it's, it's something that only works when you're working with other... That only is produced 
with other people, uh, church people. They, you know, they're all together and they're getting all, what's the word, where you're riled up, but in a positive way at church. <laughs> and you're just like, oh yeah, yes, brother, and all that. And and the brain starts producing this chemical. It's tr- I want to say it's like trips, triptosin or something like that. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. Luckily, you don't edit the podcast, so people can, can find out how I actually talk on the show yeah, this is, without this is. an editor. But we did. We only did that the one time, the podcast where we were coming up with a story together. And because it never went anywhere, I was just like, oh, well, I guess we won't do that again. But in the back of my mind, it's like, well, just because we failed once doesn't mean we would fail again. You have life experiences and you have attitudes and a background and, and, and things that I don't have that would change the course of a story, even if it was a story that I came up with. And certainly I have different life experiences, too, that I would bring to to your story whatever, where it would just make it go in a different way. Um, and so, and that to me would be really a worthwhile thing to do like quarterly or every six months or whatever, where we just say, okay, we're going to start the car <laughs> and we're going to drive North until we get to the, <laughs> <laughs> we need to find a road trip that we can do for, for something like that. We need to find a, a thing to go to. Even if it's just a concert in Denver or something like that, you know. Oh, we, see, now that would be wonderful. You and I did a concert we, where we drove, and you said never again. And <laughs> no, I yes, said never did. again will we drive there and then go to the concert and then drive immediately back without even staying the night. Well, we, we drove both the, had work the next day, I, <laughs> and I was one of those idiots who thought... Well, I can't ask for a day off because then they will question my dedication to the job. Well, of course they kicked me to the curb three weeks later anyway. Yep. They don't care about you. Yep, but yeah, we came back the very night that the concert ended. That's what was never again. I would go to a concert in Denver once a month as long as we stayed the night there and then drove back the next day. Yeah, but it would be a very pleasant podcasting experience if we did that if we said okay we're going to start an episode right now and we're not going to stop until we get to the end of the episode and i just as an experiment just to see if we could do it and see how long that would take (laughs) and all that and what if it's just a short story that we're coming up with well maybe 45 minutes later we've reached the end but what if it was something else and we're still talking two hours and 30 minutes later and we're just so excited that we're just like yeah 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 and then this and this and this and you're like no 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 and this and this Oh my gosh, you've been in that situation before, right? In that yeah. environment where there, where the, the the electricity is in the air of creative juices, and that uh, I think that would be really really neat. And I suspect that that would be exciting to listen to, but I uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I think people responded to the one that we did do, and I think I wouldn't be surprised if there are people. Uh, of the few that listen that also listen to that that might be like oh yeah why why haven't I seen a story out of that why have they still not written anything well again sometimes we need to know that somebody cares that somebody is listening that that it impacted somebody somebody said I'd buy that or I would at least read that or listen to that or I tell me more just just tell me more tell me more did you get very far is enough to sometimes motivate you to 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 do another uh, years ago I was writing in my blog and I, you've heard this story before but the audience hasn't and they haven't heard it three times I came least. up with an idea for a story and the battery was dying on my uh laptop crap top it was the crap top that's right <laughs> and uh and so I said okay I'm out of time I'm just going to hit publish on this. I haven't hit finished the end of the story. Uh, and basically it was about a, a, a kid who gets his very first cell phone. And one morning the phone rings and it's an adult version of him calling from the future. And I published it. I didn't end it or anything like that. I didn't know where it was going to go and forgot about it. And two or three years later, somebody, I guess, read that blog and, and typed on there. And then what happened? Did you ever finish this story? Where can I read this story? And it floored me because I hadn't even remembered <laughs> that I had come up with this idea. 
but I I thought, wow, thanks, Guy, for reminding me of this. I wrote that story. And, <laughs> and now you can read it on all... You can go to your, your page on Amazon, <laughs> right? And, and read the story that you wrote. This guy can... No, he, he can, can't. What? Yeah, I did nothing with it. <laughs> we have already discussed what my weakness is, kids. But... I yeah, I fully intended to write that and have that yeah. one. I mean, I wrote it. Sorry, I fully intended for us to do that on the Dune Steef, and every year, because uh, the 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 hook of that story was every year on the same day that cell phone would ring and it was him from the future calling. He was only able to call on this one day, and so. <coughs> Every year on that day, we were going to publish another installment of this story series that I, I wrote. And, of course, none of that ever happened. But it was all because of this guy that said, oh, hey, I like now that idea. Will. Can... And, yeah, may mention We're recording it. that story next week now. I'm going to be <laughs> on your ass until you freaking bring it. Because you told me you like had already. I, I once you started working on that story, you started coming up with ideas for the next year and the, and next, the next year, year and things that started changing as the you know the stories went on until this was you know a, a novel. I, I was just reading about the cycle of the werewolf by Stephen King, uh -huh. which is actually apparently a series of short stories. That uh, is it really? Yeah. Mm. That, uh, I mean, that, it's got 12 segments or whatever, if one for each month. But I didn't know that's what it was. I don't know if that's... I, I read that on Facebook, but I just thought, you know, I mean, there's... That's a... I mean, you are a short story writer. That's basically, you think of yourself as that. And your short stories are sometimes long short stories. And sometimes very long short stories. And the novel that you wrote was a short story that just got out of hand and turned out to be a novel by the time you were done with it. Um, but if you did stuff like this, where you took that story uh, and then wrote the sequel to it that happened the next year, and the sequel to it that happened the next year, and by the time you're done with ten years or whatever, you've got a novel. Like a full-length novel. Not even a short novel like what your long short story turned out to be you know and you, you you've written the calling you started in on the sequel to the calling which is basically chapter two of a what could be a novel and you already even got plans in your head for what s sequel number three would be and by the time you're done with that you definitely have a novel uh so you know i mean you've written uh, birth of a sidekick and you've written sequel to a sidekick and you've got already the idea for uh, the trilogy of the sidekick the third part to this story and pretty soon when you're done you'll have enough that you could have life of a sidekick as a novel as a novel you put them all together and you've got yourself a nice novel going it's not a bad plan I, and, and it, I, I would think it would keep things uh, interesting enough, different enough, that, you know, you could jump from one series to the next to the next, and you wouldn't feel like, ah, oh, I'm going to run another Birth of a Sidekick. Uh, you know, you'd be like, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll leave Birth of a Sidekick until after I do the next phone call from the future story. <laughs> you know, and you could write other ones that have nothing to do with anything in between when you have the idea, but it just seems like, a, you know... Not a bad way to go. Something that you ought to do. But I am forcing you to, to use that story on the show now. What uh, did, Was it a particular day? I can't remember at this point. Okay. so the, but, but yeah, the story was called Callback. And uh, I have a clue. I, I think it's all typed up. I don't know. But yeah, I, just, I, I thought it would be really fun to try and... Do it every year. Do it every year. Uh, Secret show. Santa, which made it two years. It did, and, and people dug that. People were actually disappointed the third year that uh, yeah. that there wasn't a third Secret Santa thing. And if only years were as long as they had been when we were kids. <laughs> yep, when summers felt like years. 
Yeah. Yeah. We definitely need to, uh, I think, uh, motivate each other. And, but yeah, we need to, we need to do some, some more stories for the show anyways. So we do. And you as listeners can help with this in the way that I just detailed. Just mention, I, I, and, and this is big show, so it's probably, you know, you can mention old episodes of the ankle cast when he said something that g- grabbed you or, or something that, you know, I don't know if, if there have been episodes where you're like, hey, I've been thinking about writing a story about this and it never went anywhere. But sometimes we forget and we forget how excited we were about it in 2013 or whatever it was. And we just need to be reminded that it was a good idea or that it had potential or how excited we were then. And once that comes back, it's like, okay, all I needed was time and and time has passed and now I can write it. Yeah, that is sometimes the case. There was a story that I came up with the idea for when my oldest son was an infant and because of the nature of the story, I just wasn't comfortable writing the story. If until, you know Big Ankovich, you know why. He was until saying. he was old enough that it couldn't possibly ever come true. And once he got old enough, I wrote that story. And, uh, yeah, sometimes that's, uh, that's the way it goes. Um, so, yeah, maybe a little prod or a reminder like the guy from... That's kind of funny because... The, fo- the story was about a phone call from the future, and the guy was almost like a voice from the past, <laughs> saying, hey, remember the story from the past that you forgot? What happened? About a phone call from the future that you got? Uh, <laughs> interesting. Well, th- I, I know that you're going to share more of your stories on the ankle cast. Um Maybe somebody should bug you about doing that one, because I, I I remember when you wrote that it was the longest piece you had ever written. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably put that one on here. It was it was long, it was too long. That's <laughs> that's another one of those where I know that I I know some of the reasons why it's not good. I I still like a lot of it too, but yeah, I know why it's uh, it, it's. Yeah, I, I went into a lot of unnecessary detail in that story. Um, but yeah, I, I will share that story and maybe others uh, from that time period, because that's from way back when. Uh, I think I finished that story 2003, maybe? I mean, that was a long time ago. The fact that I even wrote stories Was it, back Biggie? Then. Was it really? <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, that's my plan. My plan is to record uh, all the stories that I have that I am, you know, I'm not willing to put it on the main show. But why? It's time to figure that out. What is it that I didn't get right? What did I do wrong? Why is it? I need to be able to put a finger on it. And that, that's one of the things that I said in the show that you haven't listened to yet, is that you tend to have a pretty good grasp on story and you've said that before I think that you know you can read somebody's story and be like okay well this is you know wrong or once you took this turn then it stopped being fun or whatever and I don't know if that's a superpower that you can only you know use outwardly like (laughs) it doesn't work for your own like uh, you know most superpowers you can't make yourself you, you can't levitate yourself. You can just levitate other objects with your mind. You know? Jean Grey can't make herself fly. Um, but she can make rocks fly. Uh, you know? A Magneto can't make himself fly, but he can make a little disc of metal fly and therefore then make himself fly by ma- standing on the disc of metal. Or whatever. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, I don't know if that's the way it is for you, where you, you you know, you can look at other people's stories and say, oh yeah, this is what you needed to do. But then you look at your own story and you're like, oh, what's wrong with it? It's not working. Um, but I'm definitely that way. I, I have a hard time just looking at my story. And I, I can tell. And they're, one of the stories that I'm going to share, I'm planning on sharing on here, I rewrote the ending several times. 
I don't know if I still have the original, you know, the various versions of the ending. If I do, then I'm sharing them all. Um, but if I don't, oh well, sorry. Uh, but I know that I rewrote it several times and never did it work. And I couldn't figure out why, what it was. I'm like, oh, maybe they need to think this at the end. No, maybe they need to feel this at the end. And finally I just said, okay, I, this is the end. I don't, I still don't like it, but I'm done. Um, and yeah, that story is called Black Angel, I believe that's what it's called. But, uh... That was a story that you and I were going to publish. <clears throat> it was a broken yeah. mirror thing, and, and that, yeah, we never did another one of those. But yeah. maybe after recording it, you'll say, you know what, let's do that. Let's see if we can make a buck or two off of that thing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I don't... I, I don't think no let me let me take that back I think that that is interesting to people to listen to not just to me is you know I, I struggled with the ending and this I came up with this ending and it didn't work and I came up with this ending and it didn't work and I think this is the reason why because every human being is wired to respond to storytelling it's just I, it's something that has been genetically passed down for years and years and years, we've always enjoyed gathering around the campfire and, and telling these stories about the, you know, the woolly mammoth that the tusk broke off or whatever. I, I have no idea. <laughs> my, my genetic memory doesn't go back quite that far. It, but um, I think that there is something universally entertaining about somebody saying, you know, I tried going this way and I tried going that way and neither of them got me there. And then... I tried this, and that was the the solution. So yeah, the Black Angel. I think that would be a fun a fun episode, especially the struggles of how do I end it and how uh -huh. what is the tone. But yeah, uh, that one will be coming um, among others, um, and I'm excited to do it. I, I want to spruce up the ankle cast a little bit and make it something a little more than it ever has been. I, I'm a little inspired by your show, which often has stories, mostly has stories, it seems to me, but I think you've said that it's like one in three. One in or three something. now, I would say. But because, oh gosh, it's so easy to do something like uh, like what we're doing right now. I'll bet we've been talking for an hour and 20 minutes, an hour yeah, and 10 minutes. Probably. And it took an hour and 20 minutes for us to talk for an hour and 20 minutes. You know what? what I'm saying? That's weird. But to present a short story that takes 15 minutes to tell you maybe it took a month maybe it took <laughs> six weeks to write that story that is gone in 15 minutes or whatever i i, I just uh yeah it, it is more difficult but i'm you know i'm i'm sort of inspired by your outcast and also by the podcast that doesn't speak its name and all the production that you put into that and all the fun times you have with fake Sean Connery and singing songs and doing plays and uh, soliloquies and all the kind of crap that you find on that show. It's, it's interesting and I'd like to uh, hopefully expand this show a little further. I don't know how and where I will go with it, but, you know, most of it will be me driving and blabbing. Well, that's fine. I mean, and, and sometimes maybe uh, fake Danny DeVito could come with you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we'll have to see. But it, it, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to try and put more into it. And I guess I'll, maybe I'll shoot for your goal of one in three or whatever. And just have uh, stories uh, on here as often as possible. And um, maybe I can force myself to write stuff just for this show like I did a couple of times where I said, okay, I'm going to put a story on. And then I sat down and wrote a story for the show. Well, then probably those stories would not have existed if it weren't for the ankle cast. Yeah, that's true. And so there, the ankle cast has paid for itself. <laughs> I don't know about that. It's not like they're going anywhere, but okay, I'm down with that. All right, well, we've been going for a while, and I think it's time to uh, bring it to a close, but it's been fun. 
It's been nice to have you on the show, give it a little variety. Ankle cast tends to just have the ankle guy on it and no one else. So uh, it makes it a little more interesting. Well, you and I get together and talk about writing anyway. So why not record yeah, it and share it with other people? Who knows? Maybe we are motivating somebody else out there right now, either to podcast or to write or to toss their MP3 player as far as it will go. <laughs> or to find a lake that they can throw it in. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back, or I'll be back again uh, sometime soon on here, and I'll, we will be back again on uh, the main Dune Steve show as well. So uh, keep tuning in to this bat channel. Talk to you later, folks. See ya. You want me to put the windows up? No, it's fine. Let's leave them down. Normally I'm driving at this point, so. So the sound is actually. Plenty loud. This is going to be better than usual.